NBA 2K22 finally launched and there was a suite of issues that had players furious, some that were just fixed in a recent day one patch and others that still exist. You wanna get in the know, ladies and gentlemen, tap that big red button, man, subscribe to the channel. I just posted a video exploring all the new features and upgrades in 2K22. I'll link it at the end of the video if y'all missed it. You might notice a lot of blue icons. Those are different stores in a shopping center. Yes, I said shopping center. Pop out your skateboard and get to chopping away. Oh my God, what do we have here, lady? God damn! First things first, the servers were atrocious in the first hour the game launched in NA East. They just didn't exist. You were trying to connect to the server, trying to connect to the server, trying to connect to the server. I almost packed it up and went to sleep, but I battled through it and I'm happy that I did because I finally got through. And once you did get through, this is gonna sound crazy, and you actually played a game. The game felt good? The game was responsive? I was blown away. 2K21 current gen was probably the smoothest launch I've ever seen of a 2K product. And when I say smoothest, that's compared to a lot of atrocious launches. So it wasn't a great launch. And NBA 2K22 was giving it a run for his money, but then problems began to surface. Servers was trending number one on Twitter. I mean, me, I posted NBA 2K22 servers are non-existent at launch, but happy 2K day. One of the issues players were having was that you would purchase VC or maybe you got the legend edition and so you were owed your 100 kvc and you just haven't received it people are freaking out because you spent money and you don't have nothing in your account hank the tank posted saying i bought 450 kvc and it doesn't show up lmfao help me please and if you just scroll through the replies there was a lot of people saying the same thing was happening to them phantoms was urging people not to buy vc on nba 2k22 and after an hour of struggling to get on the servers aiden finally got in but he was having similar issues this is how his went yeah. Bro, I bought $300 worth of fucking VC, bro. $300. Literally, on stream, on God. There's no fucking... Bro, you listen. You can't even fucking like... Be like, oh, no, you didn't. Like, on God, on stream, proof. 4K, 8K quality. Where the fuck is my VC? You didn't buy it, but you could pick whatever you want. Nah, bro, don't even show <laughs> me like that. All right, all right, we'll work. Uh, so that was not actually Ronnie. That was a fake Ronnie, but it made for some good content. And so as people are freaking out, finding out if they just got fleeced for their money, NBA 2K decided to break their silence and put out a tweet saying this. 2K community, epic launch. A lot of people are trying to ball, so there might be some delays. Thank you for your passion, excitement, and support. Describing the utter disaster that was the first hour as an epic launch, is hilarious in my books. I wouldn't leave it to anybody but 2K to have that type of response. <laughs> so realizing the gravity of the issues, NBA 2K followed up and they tweeted, delays should be minimizing, entitlements of VC are normalizing and will be fulfilled shortly. Nadex quote tweeted that tweet saying, I need 450K, I got finessed. To which Ronnie 2K responded, you'll get it, sorry for the delay. But until 2K found a way to fix the issue, people were finding their own workarounds. Hank the Tank posted saying, if you bought VC on 2k22 and didn't get it yet i opened my team and it gave it all of mine instantly personally i just closed the app and then when i reopened the app it worked for me so that's what worked for me joe knows tweeted 2k must have hired sports tmb to handle the vc transactions <laughs> So there's no way to know if everybody had their situation fixed, especially because 2K support put out a tweet saying they're not gonna exist in the first week of launch. But it seems like most people that purchased VC received their VC and so it was calm. The tweet I just mentioned was in reference to this that NBA 2K support themselves posted a couple days before the game launched. Hey folks, our chat services will be shutting down at 12 Pacific for several days. During this time, you will not be able to request a chat, but you can still submit a ticket with us here. The idea that support Support would disappear before the game launches when people need it most is the most 2k sh I've ever seen in my fucking life. So once the VC issues were fixed and people were able to get onto the servers, it was a new issue that people were having, especially with next gen and especially on Xbox, and that was the game crashing. The only time my game would crash is when I go into the city center on next gen. Bro, every time I went into the city center because I wanted to go to the Gatorade facility, game crashed. I did it three times, the game crashed each time, and I eventually gave up. And because I didn't return back to the city center, I didn't have any other issues, but that's a horrible fix. Me not entering the middle of the city is a horrible fix. So 2K, please fix that.
ASAP. K Spade, the prospect, put out a tweet saying, why am I crashing every 20 seconds? To which Ronnie responded, do you have 100 friends in your list? Question mark. So you might be wondering why Ronnie would even ask K Spade how many friends he had. And that's because that's actually one of the issues with the next gen version of the game. Ronnie put out a tweet saying, the dev team is aware of an issue where if you have 100 friends online at the same time and load into the city on Xbox S and X, you may dashboard. Obviously, that's a pretty rare occurrence. It's not obvious that that's rare. It's pretty obvious that it's been more, co it's common enough for you to tweet about it, Ronnie. You don't tweet about rare fixes usually, right? He continues, a fix is coming shortly, but saw it on Reddit and wanted to comment. He followed up, aware of the issue where people are being dashboarded on Xbox S and X. A fix has been submitted and hoping a resolution is near. Thank you for your patience. More info as we have it. I mean, Mamba, professional NBA 2K League player, he responded saying, just wait till you upgrade your player and then get dashed. So people is having problems when they upgrade their player getting dashboarded. I'm having problems going to the city center and getting dashboarded. But the problems, if you know anything about NBA 2K, do not stop there. And that's because in my opinion, this is the biggest problem of all because I've never seen this in the history of 2K. But Flawless put out this tweet saying 270,000 VC to max my player route with a whole gang of question marks. And once we click on the screenshot here, he has a 6'9 two-way finisher. And after upgrading everything, it cost him 270,000 bones for a a very long time in 2K history, it was anywhere from 190,000 to 200,000. In recent 2Ks, it'd be pushing 210, 215. This is a brand new high by a very large margin. So when I sit here on these videos and I tell you guys your VC is worth less and less every year, it's because 2K sneakily makes it more expensive for you to upgrade your player the way you want to. So I thought that was fascinating, something I didn't see many people talking about, but something that caught me off guard and honestly was the most alarming thing I've seen so far here in this video. So this season, now in NBA 2K22 and you might be wondering how people are doing, who's the top rep so far. I know it's only a first day in the game's launch, but around the time that the game dropped on NA East, Glidey put out this tweet saying level 30, we grinding with proof that he just hit level 30. The game didn't even launch for us yet and he posted that. So I imagine it's not going to be as hard as we thought it was going to be to hit level 40 in every single season. And that was proven by the fact that literally later that day, Shifty decided to post a tweet saying is it even a race and he posts here showing that he's a level 38 now so he's only two away from getting himself a go-kart. For as much negative stuff was coming out, because of course it is a launch day for NBA 2K, and what else can you expect? It was actually a decent amount of positivity too, because out of nowhere, and I did not expect it, the dribblers so far, even with zero badges, are enjoying dribbling in NBA 2K22. That's on both current and next gen, who for whatever reason, if you guys haven't been in tune, everyone is saying is very, very similar in terms of gameplay. So I wouldn't choose one or the other expecting some kind of gameplay difference. As far as we know now that might change with patch here patch there to decided to post this saying dribbling feels so good for zero badges yep so i mean the animations just feel smoother it just feels like they string along with one another a little bit better and g-man himself dropped a video on his channel uh the day before launch playing the game and i've never seen g-man this excited about a 2k since like 2k19 uh young dirk decided to post a screenshot showing that he's already been banned <laughs> you might be wondering why did he get banned well power clarifies because he says young dirk has been banned for showing a glitch young dirk clarifies here saying it's funny because i didn't even do the glitch i did you guys a favor you were able to patch it before the game dropped care to explain adding ronnie 2k followed up saying update they didn't even ban the account that the glitch was done on for the video which means someone saw his video and banned his main account because he was doing the glitch on his burner you made 150 iq move 2k made the 200 iq move packed you up so nba 2k was quick with the fixes we got a day one patch and ronnie here explains about the day one patch stability includes the dashboard issue on xbox and he's clarifying because for some reason 2k never feels the reason to do that on their own and nobody really knows what, what they mean when they say like the game is more has more stability like what does that mean we need more information hopefully this also applies to the next gen version on playstation as well i've been having a lot of crash issues so has everybody i've been playing with the game with so far so hopefully it applies to both platforms it would be nice to fix this up on day one shakedown was dropping some gems on the timeline he said your boosts don't stay at 99 if you max them out 
out like they did in 21. He's showing his my health here where his boosts are indeed dropping. Mike Wang did decide to clarify right before the game launched so that people knew what they were getting themselves into when they created their builds. I found this out the hard way because I was on stream here on YouTube. By the way, subscribe, put on notifications if y'all wanna catch the streams. And I made a six foot five player with 86 ball control so I have the tier three dribbles. But I didn't know like previous years that you had to be six four and under to get some of the guard dribble moves. And after spending $50 on my New Zealand account, I was like, man, if I actually used this account and spent this VC, I'd have been highly upset. So I guess in the sport of making sure that nobody else has any regrets with their build, Mike Wang was opening up on Twitter. He says, for the steal rating, the higher you go, the more steals you get, obviously, but there are an additional and tangible benefits to 70, 80, and 90. So if you care about steals, try and hit those thresholds. I'll say this, this year, bro, if your steal rating is low, like 50, don't click the square button. You get like seized up in the slowest animation and it's the easiest thing to punish. I have a two-way build that I'm gonna be showing you guys likely tomorrow or the day after. And on my build, I have a really good steal rating. And man, when I tell you I'm I'm stripping everybody, man, I don't even have pickpocket yet. <laughs> and I'm still stripping everybody. So I imagine lockdown is gonna be a very fun build this year. Hopefully there's a little bit of balance to it though. Mike Wang says, attention dribble heads. There are some dribble styles and big size ups you need that are limited to six, four and under. So if you want access to everything, be 6'4 or shorter and the ball handle of 85 or higher, good luck. But honestly, there was only like three or four animations that were locked out for me. So I wasn't tripping anyway, but I mean, again, it is one of those small things you wish you would have known earlier. Somebody asked Mike Wang, are you gonna add animations that require 85 ball handle in the future? To which he responds, yes, some season releases we have planned will require 85, which at first bothered me. Cause I was like, damn, you grind all the way and you can't even use the animation. But first of all, you could just have a guard build and a big build so you can use the animation if you want to but also if he does put in an animation and it's actually useful to the point where all the dribblers are using it in their meta why would you want a big man to have that like that might be dangerous if you just let everybody use very good dribble moves there's a reason there's tears to it so after thinking about it for a little bit this does make sense mike wang says over here that 95 to 99 still gives you a plus four attributes on current gen he says no plus four on next gen though so there's a difference there i just downloaded Loaded the patch one update and as soon as I get done recording this video I'm gonna play I'll let you guys know what changed and if the game feels smoother this is a messy launch I don't expect nothing crazy out of NBA 2k ever but I'll say this is like top 20% launches for 2k on next and current gen as bad as it's been 2k has usually been like atrocious like they lead the gaming industry in bad launches so I have a quick but important update because I just downloaded the day one patch. Don't mind me, just popped out the shower. But I did want to let you guys know that I came to the city center and my game seems to be working fine. It hasn't crashed anymore. I wasn't able to do that basically all night yesterday once the game launched in NA East. Power also put out a tweet on Twitter saying the same thing on the Xbox side of things that the update has stopped the dashboarding issues he and a few other people have been having. So I don't imagine it fixed all the issues, but it seems like the stability stuff they were saying has been working. So that's a good thing. If you guys plan on hopping on the game, maybe it'll crash less because it was an absolute disaster for us last night. For what it's worth, the second I had a squad on next gen, I was enjoying my experience. It was way more enjoyable than current gen. And unlike the frame drops you was getting on current gen, this year 2K gives you an option to change your motion blur in the settings as well. But again, I detailed that in a lot of different changes and features and upgrades in my video I uploaded earlier today. If you guys missed it, make sure to go ahead and click on that, man. If y'all wanna stay in tune with the news, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications. I'm sweating bullets. It's time for me to play some more 2K, ladies and gentlemen. I'm excited, man. No more 2K21. I'll catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.